Eric, you have a book that's coming out. Right now we're filming this in August, but by the time this airs, it'll be September, late September, I believe. And your book is called The Idea, The Seven Elements of a Viable Story for Screen, Stage, or Fiction. I'm curious what prompted you to write the book? Yeah, so I've been a screenwriter for like 25 years and um, for the last about 10 years I've been teaching screenwriting. I've been working one-on-one -on -one with a lot of writers as like a consultant or coach and I've been just reading a lot of scripts, film and TV scripts, many, 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 many scripts, right? So you, in trying to help writers and to try to kind of codify principles of writing, which is always a touchy thing because sometimes people feel writing can't really be taught or shouldn't be taught. Um, you know, I, I've really tried to figure out what are the things that one really needs in a story idea because people don't necessarily seem to know when they're writing, but when someone reads someone's script, they often are having negative reactions. And what are the reasons for those reactions? I really made it my business to figure out like what are the sort of essential things that people are reacting to, not only when they read a script, but when they even hear the idea for a script. Because the reason the book's called The Idea is that I've really come to believe that the most important part of the process most writers bypass too quickly, which is selecting the idea and understanding what makes a viable idea. Um, that is so important to the eventual success of any project. And, and then that might seem obvious, but the average writer, myself included, tends to want to get to writing. They tend to want to just start structuring, outlining, and writing the script. So you pick an idea. You often don't vet the idea with professionals or friends or anyone. You just kind of like, I sort of like this idea. I think I'm going to write this. And then you go about writing it. Um, whereas in the industry, if you have a manager or an agent, what I've learned is they'll want you to run your ideas past them before you even start one. They don't want you to spend your time and energy on something that they don't think is viable in the marketplace to begin with. So if you're trying to write for that marketplace, if you're trying to get or maintain a, a manager, an agent, and move forward you know, in like the Hollywood marketplace, what's gonna happen to you is your representatives are gonna shoot down a lot of your ideas, which has happened to me. And they're gonna really stop you at the idea stage and wanna hear the log line or the basic, the basic premise or pitch. So I, as a writer, having agents had to live that lifestyle of I got to impress my agents first, right? Once I'm lucky enough to have one. As someone reading people's scripts as a kind of consultant or teacher, I've, I now realize what my agents were thinking because most of the things people bring to me finish scripts. The most of the notes that I have on their scripts are notes I would have had on the basic idea if they had just brought it to me when it was a log line or a 30 second pitch or a one page synopsis, the kind of thing you'd put in a query. Um, so, um, but most writers don't kind of realize that because they haven't vetted the idea with anyone. So I've been blogging for five to ten years now, you know, little tips and things, that little pieces of wisdom that I feel I've come up with having read all these scripts and seen the kind of things that I see uh, writers doing. And the blog eventually led to the idea to do a book. And the book is about, let's focus on the idea. What makes a viable idea? It's not a book about the whole process of screenwriting. It's not about story structure per se. It's not about writing scenes. It's not about navigating the business, although all those things are touched on. It is exclusively about what makes a viable idea. And let's slow down writers and really work on getting the idea right before we you know, write the script or even outline the script. So what makes a viable idea? So I came up with this little acronym of the word problem because I feel that every story is really about a problem. And it's all about, you know, when someone's reacting to your script or your pitch or your log line, what they're mostly thinking, consciously or not, is, okay, what's the problem at the center of the story? Does this problem sound really compelling and entertaining to watch? Is an audience going to care about this problem that this main character or these characters are trying to solve, whether it's film, television, or even commercial fiction or theater, I think the same kind of basic premises of you know, how story and ideas for story work applies to all of them, which is why the title mentions um, stage and fiction. They're looking at what the problem is. What's the nature of the problem or what's the nature of the goal for the main character, right? So I took problem and I created this acronym from the letters in the word problem. And the book is basically a presentation of these seven elements that start with those seven letters. And those are the elements that I think 
successful, commercially viable stories that would interest an agent, a manager, a producer, an editor, et cetera, tend to have. You want to hear what they are? Sure. Okay. <laughs> so it's just quickly, and we can go deeper if you want. The problem at the center of the story needs to be punishing, relatable, original, believable, life-altering, entertaining, and meaningful. So some of those words, I could have used different words, but they wouldn't fit the problem. So I kind of made it so sure. they all lined up with those seven letters. That's great. And, and did you, before sort of even formulating the idea for this book, no pun intended, um, go through other scripts and really hone in on what's the problem? Let's say some of the blockbusters or maybe even indie films. What, what really is the core of this problem and then work backwards? Well, yeah, I do that all the time. It's just a natural thing. Whenever I'm watching anything, I am assessing what is the central, to me that's what the story is. What's the central problem here? Uh, we could talk examples if you want, but pretty much any genre, it's about characters who are kind of punished usually as they're trying to resolve some situation. And so it's just become second nature to me to think in terms of what's the problem at the center of any TV series, TV episode, movie, story in general. And of course, when I look at someone's script or I just see the logline even, I'm, like I said, I'm looking at what's the problem here. And sometimes the logline doesn't even make the problem clear or it focuses too much on the internal problem for the characters because sometimes writers confuse like internal character arc with external problem. And great stories generally have both, but the external problem is kind of the part that people really want to know about when they are assessing your idea. It's like the external problem has to be really solid. The internal arc is a little more optional, but you've got to have that big external problem typically in a commercial type project. And so that's what I'm talking about more than the internal, what the character needs to learn and how they need to grow stuff, which is the arc or the theme or the flaw, you know, that kind of stuff. Sometimes we writers tend to focus a lot on that and make that drive all of our efforts. And what I've learned is it's, it tends to be better to let that stuff stay a little flexible until you've gotten the sort of external problem worked out and even kind of structured out a bit. Because sometimes your sense of what the theme is or what the character's growth should be will change and shift once you've really explored the external problem, the external challenge that they're you know, every scene is typically about them grappling with and trying to resolve. Well, I love that you've chosen the word punishing, whether it was just a coincidence <laughs> because it starts with P, but <laughs> because you're putting yourself in the protagonist's shoes and it seems like if you're looking through life through the lens of that character, that it is a punishment for, you know, that they, that they are enduring things that are unfair to them. So I, I like that you've chosen that as, because it, it really is sort of the journey of it, of, of a character to see it as this is a punishment and I've got to prove that I'm innocent kind of thing. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I, I think even in, even in comedy series on television, one thing I often find myself reminding myself in my own projects and telling other writers that come to me and want feedback and stuff is that your characters should really be in hell and under siege pretty much all the time. Like even if you watch a show like 30 Rock, I mean, these are slightly dated references now, but like everybody loves Raymond, but I could also talk about like Veep or Glow or current series. If you really look at what's going on for the characters that we're following, it's basically they're suffering. They're under siege. They're in a sort of hell, and they're trying to get out of it pretty much every episode. For us as an audience, it's fun to watch. It's fun to watch their reactions to things and just sort of how their characters operate and interact in a comedy, in a drama or a thriller. It's fun in a different way for the audience. It's fun for us. It's never fun for them. You know, even in even in the you know the the Save the Cat book, the Blake Snyder book, um, he talks about the fun and game section, which is the first half of Act Two in a screenplay in his world. And I think he makes some great points. But the fun and game section, even in that section of the movie, which he calls fun and games, I'm all often telling people, I don't think your characters should so much be having fun or enjoying the situation. Your characters are kind of under siege. Even in the first half of Act Two, they're kind of struggling, suffering, being punished by the situation they're in, the upside down world they find themselves in, the problem or goal that they're trying to resolve, which they're an underdog and they're overmatched and the world is not giving them what they want. That's pretty much every story in my view in every genre. So um, it's, uh, it's, it's interesting how often writers tend to write scenes of characters kind of getting along and kind of having victories. 
and I, and I usually say that, you know, in a story, the victories generally only come at the very end. If they come anywhere other than the very end, they're usually very short-lived and often overshadowed by the bigger problem that still demands resolution. Because what keeps the drama or the comedy moving is that sense of there's a problem, I'm trying to solve this problem. There's this goal, I'm trying to reach this goal. Problem and goal are kind of two sides of the same thing. Some stories, the goal is just to solve the problem. In other stories, the goal is its own positive thing, and the problem is I haven't reached the goal. So it's kind of like problem slash goal. I think of it as like the same thing. But that being difficult and unresolved and also changing and evolving and usually getting worse and more complicated over the course of the story or the TV episode or the TV series, is kind of this key thing that I'm always looking at. And I think audiences and certainly industry professionals are looking at and evaluating consciously or not. Do I feel the problem is compelling and big? Is it getting worse? You know, are the characters struggling? Is it changing and evolving, but generally in a direction of worse and more difficult until the kind of final battle at the end where the resolution finally happens? So that's why problem is that word that I think I'm always referring to when I'm talking about a story.